Uh, we're now going to switch over to school board candidates, and our first to speak will be Mr. Tommy Esplin. Well, I want to uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Tommy Esplin, and I'm originally from Iowa. I moved here with my wife about seven and a half, eight years ago. She's originally from Raytown, and I have very proudly grown to consider Raytown my home. Um, I have one daughter uh, at Westridge. Next year, I'll have two daughters at Westridge. And in a couple of years, I'll have four children because my twin sons will be at Westridge as well. Um, they were surprise twins, which is a funny story, <laughs> but I won't tell it now. <laughs> Ask me that later. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about why I'm running. Um, the day that I filed to be a candidate uh, was a beautiful afternoon in January. So my family went to one of our parks to take advantage of the opportunity and to just be a part of the community. And uh, I was really excited about running. And when I got there, there was a father there, I started talking with him. And I almost said something silly like, so I'm running for school board. Uh, but I didn't. Um, because of something that he said. And he turned to me and he said, we live here now, but we're going to need to lease something just as soon as we can. Don't we just hear that way too often? Raytown is way too great a place just to just be a stopping point before people move to a different suburb. Raytown is an incredible. We have businesses like Benetti's Coffee that has some of the best coffee in the entire KC metro area. We've got Smith Brothers, which has better service than any box store. We have beautiful parks with incredible equipment. We have beautiful walking paths. We're close to places like the Starlight Theater, the Kansas City Zoo, and I'll be honest with you, I could practically hear the word stage from my driveway. We have an incredible community, and one of the things that I love about this community is the diversity. I love the fact that when we go to these parks, my kids don't play with kids that look just like them. When we come to school events, there are races and ethnicities that are different from them. I love that. And it's important that we continue. So, uh, my point is that Raytown is way too good uh, to just be a stopping point. Which brings me back to one of the school Schools are the backbone of the community. And I've spent the last 15 years working in schools with teachers and alongside teachers to help students and families be successful. Um, and I want us to do two things. One, I want to get the word out about how great we are. Our school board should be a mouthpiece to the community and the surrounding communities for how wonderful this community and this school district is. And two, I want us to get better. I want us to foster policies that improve the inclusiveness of our schools. I want to support our faculty and staff, and I want to improve the motivation of our students. Well, I think clearly we're as good as these other schools and these other suburbs. There are ways to improve. And a focused effort to bring research-based, inclusive change to our schools is a way to bring vigor and new life to our communities. I see that a change in our schools can help us become a closer-knit, more prosperous community. And a cutting edge city. And so my candidacy is my way of saying, let's do this.
And um, I am also a product of Raytown Schools. Um, I graduated from Raytown High School in 1985, and I went to Norfleet. I was in the last class at Raytown Junior, which is now Raytown Central Middle School. I still have my I Close Raytown Junior uh, <laughs> t-shirt that I'm very proud of. Um, and then I was a Blue Jay. It's been very hard having nieces and nephews at Raytown South, I will admit. <laughs> Um, but I have a 21-year-old daughter that graduated from Raytown, and I have uh, twin 11-year-olds that are middle schoolers at Raytown North. I also have five nieces and nephews that have graduated from Raytown South, and also a sophomore niece that is also at Raytown South currently. So I've had kids all over in the district, and I feel like we are Raytown through and through. Uh, my parents still live here, and um, all of my siblings, other than my brother, who decided to move to Florida, um, we all live here um, and are all very much part of Raytown. One of the interesting things, though, is I've never lived in Raytown. I have always had a Kansas City address. And sometimes that causes a lot of confusion, because with my kids going to Fleet Ridge, um, with myself going to Fleet, many of the parents side of the district don't always feel as involved in what's going on in Raytown as a community. And sometimes even in the Raytown schools, they feel involved in their home school, but not necessarily the things as a school district um, in total. So one of the things that I think um, that we need to really work on is figuring out, we were talking about the charter earlier, and um, it's exciting for the school district and the way that it will impact us. But I think as a Kansas City resident, we don't always know about those things. Um, so that is one of those things that we really need to figure out how to get folks more involved in. I have been focused um, in a variety of areas in the last nine years while I've been on the board. One of the most important things, though, for me is figuring out how to make all children successful. The state tells us that based on a number, a score, that we collect on a child one day out of one year is how successful that child is. But if that child didn't sleep good the night before, or if they didn't have breakfast that morning, or if they were having a bad day, that score could be good or bad. And their success needs to be measured all year long. And we have had a lot of discussions as a board Dr. Markley and I have discussions all the time about how kids are successful. It could be them learning to tie their shoe. It could be someone being able to sit in a chair for five minutes without touching their neighbor. And those could be middle schoolers or high schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> um, it could be a variety of things. We get kids that come to us or that have been with us that are below grade level when they're reading. It could be them having accomplished moving up a grade level. That's not going to show on a test necessarily. But wow, that is a huge accomplishment. And that is something we have to celebrate and we have to see as success. So that is one of those things that I think we need to figure out how to do a better job um, and recognize not only as parents, but as a community to really see that it's not just about the number that's on a piece of paper or what the state says on a website, but it's about what is happening in that child's life and what is happening for that specific child as to whether or not they're successful. <coughs> we have um, had attendance issues, and that was another thing that we talked about. When kids don't have what they need, sometimes they don't want to come to school. We have had students in the past that had three changes of clothing. So they would come to school three days. Because they didn't have clothes, they didn't want to come the other days. Until we had attendance people put in place to make phone calls, we didn't really know what that situation was. When we found out by partnering with churches and with other local organizations, we were able to get that taken care of. Guess what? That's success. Being able to get that child what they need and get them into the building. That is huge. So knowing what's going on with those kids and being able to help them and their families be successful is what we need to be able to do. 
it's not about the 8900 kids. It's about each one of them and getting to know what it is about each one of them. You can't say, oh, all of those kids need, because that's not necessarily the case. Yes, they all need to eat lunch, but they may have other needs as well. I am a process engineer, and I work for IBM. We have 400,000 people that work for us all over the world. And I am the Director of Global Education for Adults. So I work with companies everywhere and get to talk to them all about education, all about how to train their adults. Um, I had a talk with uh, an organization recently in Japan. And I am one of 3,000 people in my practice group. So that means there's 3,000 of us that do my job. I'm the only female in that 3,000 group. So I have all men that work for me and all men that work with me. I have um, had some challenges working with some organizations in some of these different countries. Um, in Japan, they're not extremely accepting of some of the women that they might have to work for or work with. So they go through our list of employees. They picked my last name. They saw Collins, and they saw a K, not knowing what my first name was. I have a PhD, so they saw that. They wanted those credentials. So that was who they wanted on their project. And when I got on the phone, they heard a feminine voice, and they assumed I was someone's secretary. <laughs> and I helped them to understand what was going on. We had a great conversation. They were very quiet. And it took about five weeks. And we had all of our work calls. We did what we needed to do. But my idea of success is to really bond with someone, to really get what they need. They get all of this information. I can pull that information from them. I have kids that are active in sports. My boys play ice hockey. I'm not shy about sharing what I did for the weekend with the people I work with. I want to know what they did for the weekend. I've been to Tokyo. I went with one of their sons um, on a week trip to Tokyo. He took me all over the city. I got to see all sorts of things. So I wanted to know personally what was going on with them. About five weeks into that project, I finally got one of them to say, did we win our hockey games this weekend? <laughs> that was success. Getting them to connect. And that's what we have to see with our kids too. Getting them to um, connect with that one adult and figuring out how to communicate, how to make them successful in everything that they do. I think that um, one of the questions that we, we received was um, about the positive things with youth in our community. And I touched on it a little bit um, with the whole making sure that every child is successful. Kids aren't data points. Um, data is for machines. Uh, we can measure those types of things. We can measure a child by how tall they are, how much they weigh, but that's going to change. Um, we really need to look at kids and really understand in the community how successful they are. The one thing that I am proud of in Raytown is that wherever I go, I don't say I'm from Kansas City, I say I'm from Raytown. Um, when I go somewhere, my little placard says, Dr. Christy Collins to Larbor, Raytown, Missouri. I was in Europe recently. I had two gentlemen come up to me and say, I'm a bulldog and I'm a tiger. And I said, Grand View and Lee Summit. And they said, yeah. And it's the pride that you take with you. And I want to see that with more of our kids. So that is another one of those things that I really want us to focus on um, going forward. Because I think once you have that, that's what brings people into our community. Thank you all very much.